Hello there guys, Coast Shell here, Donks to Warm, Bob Bill for Theme Parks, and welcome to a breaking, breaking, breaking news update from Grona Lund. And this is on an exciting new project set to start construction from the sounds of it in 2024. And this is an expansion into a current car parking area to expand the theme park. Uh, so we've got a few details from the website. You can look at the full uh, article on the website of Grona Lund. The article's linked in the description down below. I'm only going to be reading a section of it and then looking a little bit deeper into the before and after pictures and sort of see what looks like from the ride experience that we can see on the concept arts. Uh, before we get started guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the OK bell so you don't miss a YouTube video. Uh, please make sure you go in the description for social media links, the article link, uh, Google Forms where you can submit your own video ideas. And for now guys, let's have a look at exactly what's going on with Grona Lund and their 2024 vision. So Grown Alone was founded in 1883 and is one of the world's oldest amusement parks, but it was just over 40 years later, in 1924, that Je Garden became the obvious gathering place for everyone who was interested in funfair in Stockholm. That was the year when the competitor Nosfaltet, which had previously been travelling around, moved into the plot Skepskolm Visken, opposite Grona Lund. In the years that followed, Nosefaltet and Grona Lund were angry competitors, but when the children of Grona Lund and Nosefaltet's owners fell in love and got married, the battle axe could be dug down and a coasive amusement park area could emerge. The amusement park closed operations in 1957 and the area has since been forgotten about as a boring parking lot. In 2024, 100 years after Nosefaltet opened its gates on Skepshol Visken, we are able to put the shovel in the ground to once again be able to create a coercive amusement park area on both sides of the public alley for both amusement park visitors and zoo strollers. We want to create a new and inviting public promenade on the Pile Bridge in the water outside Grona Lund, a small scale and vibrant Jusgard Skvarta that connects to existing architecture, a public square area to create larger areas by the Jusgard Svarjan, and a completely new amusement park with both games, restaurants and attractions for all ages. Games, restaurants, ice cream parlours, trees and greenery should combine with attractions that are both nerve-wracking and child-friendly, a varied amusement park area in harmony with the surroundings. Greenery is important for many reasons and at least 25% of land and roof surfaces must be designed with trees and vegetation. The area close to the water should have more of a park-like character, where new trees are planted and low shed-like houses are placed sparsely behind the trees, so that the area forms a green park-like front towards Saltshorn and the promenade. When it comes to maximum heights on buildings and attractions inside the new amusement park area, the general permitted maximum height is 12 metres, with the exception of certain peaks. In the southern part, close to the ferry berth, the maximum height may be 12 metres. In the middle part, there may be a peak of 18 metres and a peak of 35 metres. In the northern part, close to Sparsgar Shalana, there may be four peaks, of which three at 30 metres and one peak of 45 metres. In comparison, their maximum heights are more than half in what exists in Groenland's existing area today. Where our highest attraction eclipses 121 metres, followed by Icaros at 90 metres and Fritzfall at 80 metres. But it's not always the height that determines the tingling in the stomach. We're happy to see opportunities for classic as well as new attractions at ground level. The environment in the area will breathe classic amusement romance where popcorn scent and laughter are mixed with atmospheric lamps, colourful architecture and flamboyant flower arrangements. To be able to imagine what the area might look like, we have produced various illustrations. These pictures are not sharp plans, but the ideas of what they might look like based on what proposed detail plans allow. On April 20th, 2020, a majority in the City Council of the City of Stockholm voted yes to the detailed plan, and it was appealed to the Land and Environmental Court, which annulled the detailed plan. Groenland is now appealing that ruling to a higher instance, the Supreme Land and Environmental Court. Now, of course, in terms of the Tivoli area, you've seen... Uh, a couple of con uh, well, a concept uh, of what of one part of it, and you've also seen what the car park currently looks like without it. Now let's have a little look at what it will look like with the changes. So, fan dabby dozy on your screen now is what it will look like with, and I must stress with the brand new attractions. Now, obviously, when you uh, look at what's on show and what looks to be on show. Um, it looks very, first of all, it looks very, very exciting. Um, it looks incredible. It looks amazing. It looks, it, it just gives you all, 
all signs of an amazing area. It gives you really good, you know, the, the history behind it is amazing. And overall, I think this looks absolutely incredible. Uh, looking deeper into the area, uh, I don't know if you can zoom in on yourselves, if you've got the image on your phone somewhere while you're watching this, but uh, you can see a classic bumper cars attraction. Um, you could see some buildings around the promenade. Um, you can see some little things here and there. It's a multi, from the looks of it, it's multi-story. But of course, there's one big thing you can recognize immediately, and that is this roller coaster stood right there in the center. Now, obviously, this is not the confirmed layout. However, I'm going to now give you my predictions as to, well, I'm going to give you my predictions just after this little bit as to what I think the coaster could be from those kind of layout designs alone. Obviously, it's not the confirmed layout or the finished layout of the coaster, but it does draw up some interesting predictions as to what it could be. So I'm going to offer my thoughts on all of that, but just to sum up uh, before we move into my predictions on what the main coaster will look like and what it could be. I think this looks absolutely incredible. I think Groenland have done a fantastic job devising this up. You saw by the earlier concepts as well how amazing it looks. And I think that overall this is going to be an absolutely wonderful new area. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen, Thrill Seeks of All Ages. That is looking at Gronelund's vision for 2024. It looks, well, from the article, it looks like construction set to start in 2024. It uh, wants this, if this gets passed. Um, obviously, in terms of when we think it's going to open, if it's going to start construction in 2024, we're looking here between 2026 and 2027 at maximum. Maximum 2028. Let's go between 2026 and 2028, uh, which will have been... Um, five to seven years after the opening of Monster, their Bulgar and Mabillard inverted coaster uh, that's opening this year, or it's opened this year. Um, now, obviously, in terms of the main attraction in the area, we saw the bumper cars, we saw other little details here and there. The landscaping of the area is beautiful, by the way. Big up to Grown Alone for the design of the whole, you know, area and the fact that, you know, it feels like a piece of history coming back, which is lovely. The main attraction is obviously for us enthusiasts, the roller coaster. And from the design of it, obviously, like I said, it's not confirmed what the design will look like. That is just a rough sketch of what the, what the layout could be based around. But there's a couple of interesting coasters that I think it, this could be. There's three types of coasters that I think this could be. And hear me out on all of them, because you could see them. You could see what this could be. Now, one of them could be a Vekoma Bermuda Blitz, look at Let Coaster at um, Legendia in Poland, look at the layout, well the rough sketch of the layout of the coaster on the plant. I think there's similarities here with the Let Coaster in terms of the types of elements that looks like they're on there. Another type of coaster this could be, this could be, and hear me out again, Europe's first single rail coaster. I could be wrong, I could be completely off the mark. But I think there's a real opportunity that they could go with a single rail here. Even though the track doesn't look single rail, I know that. Uh, but I think that with those types of elements, like I say, it's just a rough sketch at the minute. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like. Uh, but it could potentially, you know, a single rail could use some of those elements used in the rough sketch. And finally, and this could be the most out there suggestion, the most least likely suggestion. But judging by who they worked with on their last coaster this year, uh, Monster, it could happen. A B&M dive coaster. And again, I'm putting that suggestion out there. It might be the least likely suggestion out of the three. Out of the single rail, the Bermuda Blitz, and the dive coaster. The dive coaster could be the least likely. But if you think about it, they worked with B&M on the last coaster. Who's to say this is not a two-for-one deal? Who's to say this project, if it goes ahead, could involve a second B&M coaster? And to be fair, that even though there's a little bit of bump in the drop, in the first drop of the, of the rough sketch... It looks very dive-like, and the elements, some of the elements look very dive-like in the rough sketch. So, I think that a B&M dive coaster can't be officially ruled out, but I think it's least likely uh, from the from the compactness of the layout. But you never know; this could be different. It could be completely different. Um, but those are sort of my first three sort of you know early predictions, very very early predictions as to what this could be. Uh, going with the Bermuda Blitz or the uh, single rail or the dive coaster from B&M. I think either one of them could be it. It could be something completely different. Uh, but it's a rough sketch of what we generally could be looking at here. So, 
but I think overall in terms of the whole area, I think that the, like I said, the whole landscaping of it is beautiful, the graceful design of it all, you know, the different elements of it, the, the sort of fun fairy feel in a way, it's like a fun fair type area uh, with the bumper cars on show as well. And I think that it just, it would be amazing. And to be fair, if you take all three of those early predictions for what the coaster could be, the Koma Bermuda Blitz, b &M Dive, and Single Rail. A single rail for Europe would be great. I've wanted to see a single rail as long as they can, you know, get around the, the low capacity issue, which, you know, is, is known around the Six Flags Park, especially the big ones. Um, and I know that Magic Mountain's going to go for, like, the Jersey Devil type layout with the, the bigger capacity as well. So I think they're, sort, they're, they're trying to sort the capacity out in that regard with that one. Jersey Devil's obviously, you know, got its... It, it's not as low capacity as the prototype ones that... Uh, Fiesta Texas and of course at California's Great America as well and the one going to uh, Silverwood this year as well Stunt Pilot I think that you know if they can sort out the capacity issue and go for like a Jersey Devil type capacity maybe we could be looking at a single rail here not a type layout but sort of the, the higher capacity than the prototypes in terms of the Bermuda Blitz I think again that could be great because I think a new Gen Vacoma the sort of the rough sketch of the layout screams next Gen Vacoma coaster which is perfect for Europe they've been a perfect addition to Europe with the Lek coaster in the Jandia Poland so I think that again Grenland could benefit from a next Gen Vacoma and they're fairly cheap compared to other coasters from other manufacturers you know we have to be blunt and realistic here um, but on the other hand, the more expensive, the most expensive out of the three, the Bulgar and Mabiar, the dive coaster, again, that's not completely out of the realms of possibility because I think that overall, I think it's wonderful to, to potentially see this. I think that, um, you know, it, it'd be wonderful to see this. I think that, um, you know, it might not be the tallest coaster in the world, but I think it would certainly, you know, deliver some thrills. It might not be a full record breaker, but it would just be a nice underrated coaster. And I think that b would do a really good job with that site. I think they could do a really good job integrating it with this whole new area. So I think Grand London's onto a real winner here. I really do hope they get the uh, permission accepted for this. And uh, it's really exciting. I think I think the city of Stockholm and the council and over there is really on board with this. And uh, they need to get everything passed on now. And it should be all sorted by construction starting around 2024. Uh, so there we go, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, my name is Coach Chow, Caitlin in the Coast Life. And I'll see you guys next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a growner tastic day. <laughs> Hashtag Stockholm.